this is Karen McCorder, Scarlet Curator of the Whitney Western Art Museum here at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. Thanks for tuning in today, and if you like what you hear, what you see, I encourage you to please subscribe to the Center of the West's YouTube channel and follow the Whitney on social media. We have accounts on Facebook and Instagram. So today I'm going to share with you an assortment of works of art by the artist Carl Roders. Now here at the Whitney, we have over 120 works by Carl Roders. Most of these were gifts from the artist's family. We have many paintings, drawings, sketchbooks, and this collection really runs the gamut. And what's wonderful is with a collection like this, we can really dive into an artist's process and take a more comprehensive look at his or her, oof, their body of work. So I wanted to start with a work that might remind you of geological, geographical sketches from the era of the artist explorers. This is a depiction of a landmark that many people know well. It's Square Top in the Bridger Wilderness. This um, is in proximity to Jackson, Wyoming, which is where Carl Roders ended up retiring. And I better tell you a bit about his biography um, before we dive any further into his artwork. So Roders was a New Yorker. He was a professor at Syracuse University and was renowned as a muralist. Um, actually, during his time, he painted what was then the largest mural in the world, uh, measuring 1,000 square feet. This was a watercolor mural of the Manhattan skyline. Now, Roters wouldn't have called himself a Western artist, and that's probably the case with many artists represented in the Whitney's collection. Roters was inspired by his surroundings, wherever that might be. So if he was in New York, the Manhattan skyline called, and if he was in the West, the landscape, the history, the contemporary peoples were his inspiration. So what brought him West in the first place? Well, interestingly, it was John D. Rockefeller Jr., peripherally. As many of you know, John D. Rockefeller Jr. had much to do with Grand Teton National Park becoming what it is today. Well, he set up a commission in 1957 to hire an artist to create murals for the Jackson Lake Lodge. Roters participated in the commission and ended up winning. Now, the theme of that mural series was to be the fur trade, and the fur trade has roots that are long and deep here in present day Wyoming. Back in the 1830s, earlier yet than that and beyond, the fur trade was taking place um, and particularly in rendezvous settings around present day Pinedale and Dubois in the Green River Valley. So Roters moved out to Wyoming to spend some time soaking up the environment, the history, making studies and ended up retiring here actually, spending the rest of his uh, life and career in the Jackson area and creating works that were predominantly Western in theme. So let's check out a bit of his work. Let's go back to his depiction of Square Top. This is a sketch that Roters would have made on plein air or outdoors looking at uh, the feature that he was depicting. It's created quickly with pen and ink and a wash or two there, and it really is just the suggestion of the land form that he could take back with him to his studio and work up perhaps into a larger format painting. Uh, you can see his inscription at the bottom, hard to see, it's in pencil. Uh, it fades a bit against the pen and ink, but this was actually created on a painting trip, um, or rather a camping trip, and he notes that in his note there on the bottom left. So I mentioned that Roters was very inspired by the fur trade in creating his mural, the successful mural for Jackson Lake Lodge. Well, I wanna show you some sketches of mountain men that he created. This is a wonderful group of character studies. And to me, they draw immediately from the work of Alfred Jacob Miller, an artist who Roters mentioned he was very inspired by. Now Miller was working in 1837 in the Rocky Mountain West he was the only artist to depict the fur trade at its heyday during its time. So his artwork is really an incomparable visual insight into that portion, uh, however brief, of Western American history. So Carl Roders, inspired by Miller's work, really um, went to town 
studying Miller's oeuvre and creating characters that might be drawn from Miller's paintings. You can see this is another pen and ink sketch. It's on watercolor paper. It's just a study. Again, you can even see there's a crease along the middle. This is not meant to be a finished work. Um, and really what Roeders is doing is just creating personalities, characters for his paintings. It's not only Euro-American mountain men that he's depicted, but there are also some native figures, a horseback rider in the lower right, proper lower right. So as we can see with his topographical sketch and his character sketches, he's a very talented technician, uh, but his style varied well beyond a representational or realist um, style. And this is very exemplary of that. This particular painting is made of multiple media. It too is a study, a study of wild horses. And if you look carefully, you can see their grid marks on the painting. This was meant to help scale up the work to mural size. But when you think of Carl Roeders, and as you get to know his oeuvre better, this is more of what you might imagine. It is representational to some degree, but incorporates abstract elements. There are washes of color loosely applied, a variety of media ranging from pencil and pen to um, earth toned watercolors here into the cobalt blue and black range at top. Um, this would have been meant to be a study for a larger work. And I'd like to end the discussion with three small sketches that are among my favorite in Roeder's Oeuvre. And they're very small. This is the first. It's quite abstract, almost completely non-representational. And it is, in fact, a study. Uh, and if you look carefully and maybe squint your eyes and use your imagination, you can, in fact, see a rider on horseback. We've got a very simple palette here of red, blue, black and orange, a peachy orange. And he's used the black paintbrush to really outline just the essence of a figure. The two final works I'd like to share are related. These two are also studies. And again, we have, I'll hold one at a time. We have a very simplified depiction of the human form, in this case, what appears to be a mother and child, a horse leaning down toward the figure's feet, this beautiful, rich red backdrop, and just simple colors used to outline the figures, but mostly they're depicted in pen and ink um, and almost scratchily laid in. And finally, a slightly larger version of that same work but conceived slightly differently. We have the horse at left, but the two figures have separated a bit. We can see them a bit more. Um, these are really lovely, and they're made of watercolor, of gouache, of glazes, and pen and ink. So hopefully in this group of works by Carl Roeders, what you see is that we at the Whitney have the unique ability to tell his story uh, quite fully and from a variety of angles. And if you're interested in seeing the winning result of John D. Rockefeller Jr.'s mural commission, I'd encourage you to head across Yellowstone over to Grand Teton to the Jackson Lake Lodge, where these eight foot tall murals painted on wood backing boards still hang today in the mural dining room. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you heard, what you saw, we encourage you to follow us. Uh, come back and listen for more next time. Thanks. Thank you.